Hello, I am Bernard Dan. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Developmental Medicine and Child Neurology. That's a red journal. And I once read that uh, uh, neurophysiological studies see that red is the very first colour that babies can see. Can't remember that far, but I remember that the first paediatric neurology journal I did read was developmental neurology. So I started as a reader, and then I started uh, being also an author. Eventually I joined the board, and here I am. I'm wondering what I can share about writing. First of all, I think writing articles is really important for personal development. It certainly helped me grow, helped me understand, uh, be critical, and engage with kids, with peers, with, with colleagues. Now, writing uh, is storytelling, always. But if you want to write in a pediatric neurology journal, you want to write something original, something new, something interesting. You can also choose to write a review. But even then, you review existing literature, but you want to add your interpretation, your personal touch, and you want to move the field uh, forward. So you first think of a good story, of a narrative, and it's very important to bind this narrative with the existing literature. The past questions, the current scientific and clinical questions, so you need to know them, and in order to know them better, you need to read. To read with your writing in mind. So perhaps when you read, you start doing a list for, for your references. And perhaps that list will really be your reference uh, list. You will select those references. Then when you start writing, you want to write clearly. You don't start with the title. You don't start, I don't start uh, with the abstract. I'll start with the structure. I start with a question that I have and a message uh, I might have. So I have the audience in mind. So when I write, I already have a journal in mind. Perhaps I will change uh, ideas, but from the very beginning, I try to th I'm trying to think that I have an audience in mind. So I'm going to tell the story to those people in that style, in their culture. And uh, I first think of the questions and the messages, and often I write them so that they're, they're in front of me and they live with me. Again, in the process, they can change. They can get refined. They can be more accurate. They can be more relevant. But I want to have them. What are the questions? What are the, the messages? When I write, I think about the structure of the paper, and it's a good guide. I want to know what will go in the introduction and what will go in the discussion. And it's not the same because you, you have a flow in, in a story. And then what goes in the methods should only be the methods. Nothing to do with the introduction, no discussion, no results there. And then the results. I want to be very explicit and precise about what I do so that people can really follow me uh, in, in that story. Eventually, um, I think of the title. So not too early in the process. And to me, a good title is explicit, is simple. Not especially witty. And I, I do think that that's a good idea. I think a, a good title uh, should tell you about the paper, perhaps more about the questions or the issues than the answers. But all these would go as long as it's explicit uh, and simple. In the title, I would like to select words that would be good search terms. As I said, I'm in search of an audience, and I want the audience to be able to find me, to find a story I want, I, I want to share. The abstracts, I write it at a late stage, but not on the same day as the day I choose for submission. So the abstract, I take my time, the abstract is structured, and by the time I write the abstract, I have developed so much knowledge about my own paper that I can take this extra distance and really think about what the introduction to the abstract should be. And it's not the same as the, the introduction to, to the paper, because the abstract can live by itself. The methods that should be 
clear and explicit, not vague, the results with figures, with clear results. If you have stats, put some stats, not too much complexity, but enough to show that you, you talk about something and you give results that, that uh, can be used. Don't forget to have in mind your question and the interpretation. A point which I find very important throughout is ethics. So be ethical, don't plagiarize, uh, be ethical in the way you engage with the participants, in the way you write. And then when you submit, do not forget that it will be read first by reviewers, not first by the general readers. And reviewers are your peers. Don't see them as your judges. Never see them as your enemies or competitors. They're your peers. They're people like you who give their opinion just as you might give your opinion. And being a reviewer is also a good exercise in that process of writing. What I'm saying about the reviewers is also true for the editor. And a decision is a dialogue. Maybe you think that dialogue is closed, but always see it as a dialogue. And if you think you need to open it, do you open it. Writing is interesting as an exercise in itself. It makes you a better clinician. It makes you a better scientist and it makes you a better peer. Well, I don't know if it will make you, but this is the experience um, I've had. I hope this is useful. If you want more, and if you want to ask me questions, you'll find my email address very easily, and you're always welcome to join me, because we too are colleagues and peers. Good luck.